On today's episode of Identity, we discuss forgiveness and new beginnings with entrepreneur and motivational speaker Chere Matsiko. We unpack the state of substance abuse in South Africa. What's Happening features the review of a skill building app and a travel website. And we play out with a track from gospel group We Will Worship. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Good morning, Mzanzi. It's another blessed Sunday, and as usual, right here on Identity, we give you the spiritual oomph to get your week started right. I'm your host, Viewer Kuala. In the year 2000, a gathering of world leaders put together a list of eight Millennium Development Goals with the aim of improving the lives of people across the globe by the year 2015. One of those goals was to eradicate extreme hunger and poverty. The 17th of October has declared the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. This day was set aside to promote awareness of the need to eradicate poverty in all countries. As the world carries on the mandate set by the United Nations General Assembly, are you playing your part in your corner of the country? Someone who is definitely playing his part is my coffee shop guest today. Let's go meet him. When he was just 19 years old, the young man joining me this morning was imprisoned for various crimes. For most people, an 18-year prison sentence would have meant the end of life itself, but for Chere Matsuke, this was the beginning. While incarcerated, he got involved in activities that helped to better himself and his fellow inmates. Today, he is a successful entrepreneur, a motivational speaker, and the author of an upcoming book that aims to highlight the impact of crime in South Africa. Clearly, this young man has an interesting story to tell, and he's here to share his journey with us. Chere, welcome to Identity. Thank you. So before I get into your interesting story, I want to find out about your childhood. What was your childhood like? I had a fantastic childhood. Mm. It doesn't matter the circumstances. Mm. As you can imagine in the township, you all say Ekasi, you know, mm. we grew up under these circumstances, this and that, you know. Yes, at some point my mom lost her job, but really didn't change a lot of things. As I also had support from my grandma, whom I was staying with, okay. and my extended family as well. So. I had a fairly, fairly, fairly good childhood. Okay. And on your 19th birthday, you know, you got arrested for various crimes. And what do you think are the life choices that you made that led you to that point? Because you say your, your childhood was fine. So what were the life decisions and choices that you made that led you to that point? I think one of the things that always come to my mind, it's the fact that, you know, wanting to be popular, the want to be popular in the township and mm. the want to be respected and feared uh, by my peers and basically everyone that I come into contact with. I think those were the decisions that I took and eventually I had to, you know, uh, behave strangely in, in, in trying to achieve what I wanted at that moment. Mm. So. As a result, that changed my life completely and took me out of course. You were involved in a number of programs while you were incarcerated. Please tell us about some of the programs you were involved in and how they impacted your life today. One of the most powerful courses that I did, it was my path. My path was a very powerful course. It had a lot to, to do with my, my being, you know. Um, it spoke or it challenged me to uh, look at my background, where I come from, the decisions that I made, you know, how I bruised myself and the need to heal. Mm -hmm. And therefore it took me through the process of healing and, and the forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others, and really, really having the courage to, to go and seek for forgiveness to those I have, I have wronged. Mm -hmm. You know, it really built me up in a number of ways amongst other courses that I did, obviously. Okay. So how did incarceration impact your spirituality? Because you're speaking about attributes of spirituality when you speak about forgiveness. I remember I, I had challenges really of, of coping with my prison term and number of things that which were happening within the prison environment. And prison gospel, it's one tough gospel that will really speak to you, to, to your conscience. And one would be convicted because of the Holy Spirit's uh, presence in, in within the prison walls. And, mm -hmm. 
he touched me and he changed my life. My life was never the same. Mm -hmm. The word of God says that when a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, the old is gone, the new has come. That's exactly what happened to me, you know. It was like he showed me two different pictures of myself. You know, they knew me, the better person that I could become. Mm -hmm. And he showed me the worst me, the person that I was and the person that I can continue to be. And where am, am I gonna end being this person and the bright future. I had to make a choice because mm -hmm. he says that I, I put before you blessings and cursings, a choice to do right and to do wrong. I took a better choice and I chose Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and he transformed my life yeah. in ways that I still can't believe. Speaking about choices and changes, how important is it you know, for social integration to take place for former inmates because you were released on parole in 2011? Yes, it's very important. However, it's, it's mostly dependent on um, the, the, the ex-offender. Mm -hmm. The ex-offender, because the community don't know they knew you, really. Yeah. They don't know they knew you. you they, they're still afraid. They still don't know how to react around you. But then you tell people how to treat you. We still have a challenge to, to heal our communities because while we're healing in prison, while the focus is, is, in, is on the inmates in prison, really, we get restored. But then we're leaving people whom they get less assistance outside mm -hmm. here. You know, the, the attention is very, very little. And really, it's in my heart to also contribute to, you know, uh, the betterment of, of, of our society, mm -hmm. yes, to get them here. When you're speaking about healing and uh, the community, what comes in mind is, obviously, as a spiritual person, you are able to understand that in forgiveness, you are able to, you know, ask for forgiveness if you've wronged a person and vice versa. How do you come to a point where you actually forgive yourself as a spiritual person? When you really need to be free, mm. when you really need a fresh start, mm. you make that decision. It doesn't have to feel right. It doesn't have to look right, really. But it's a decision. It's a decision that you're taking that I am forgiving myself. I'm going to make sure that, you know, through prayer as well, mm. most importantly, because Part of my prayers, even on daily basis, I'll ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse my conscience. Mm -hmm. You know, help me be the better person because I can't on my own, I can't. That's why a lot of people are struggling. It's because anything and everything that you want to do with your own strength, you fail. Mm -hmm. We fail because we don't put God first. You know, it's important that we depend, lean not unto your own understanding. That's what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. But then put all your faith, Put all your trust, cast your burdens unto the Lord, the Most High God. If unforgiveness is your burden, trust Him, believe Him, you know, to remove it and carry it for you. He says, my yoke is light. Therefore, those are the things that which you need to believe in, really, and take action. Action is very important. Without action, you're going nowhere. For a young person that is inspired by your journey and has often, you know, chosen decisions that are not up to par what would you say to that young person who's inspired by your journey it depends obviously mm -hmm. that what, what what is it that one is going through mm -hmm. but one of the things that the person need to really keep in mind before they can go and commit any criminal activity before let them take time to themselves and think mm -hmm. is prison worth my life mm -hmm. is death worth the contribution, the worth that I have, you know, and, and they need to think really of their families, that do they worth, is, 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 is the crime or whatever wrong decisions that they want, they want to take, is it worth their family's emotional burden and everything, you know, will their parents afford coming to prison maybe once a month or be twice a month in prison you know is it worth it really can they really give away you know their precious time it's not only prison because you know the prison as as in the building mm -hmm. is not the only prison that we can refer to because we're also talking about substance abuse which mm -hmm. is one of the main most powerful and dangerous prisons that people can find themselves in you know i could it be promiscuity you know, really, persons should really think to themselves that, is this worth it? Do I want to go through this? Do I want to entangle myself mm -hmm. with these things and imprison myself not knowing how to go out? They need to think about that first. Okay. 
Yes. Wow, that was that was a mouthful. And speaking about you know entangling and getting <laughs> into things, we're going to get into our game, Conalay kind of Identity. So what we do, we have, we have a quick word game, and you need to answer as quickly as possible. This game for this week is called the Magic Word If. Okay, if you were a car, who from your family would drive you? My mom. <laughs> if you were a pair of shoes, would you be sandals or heels? Sandals. If you were a hairstyle, would you be would you be rocking a razor cut or a mohawk? A razor cut means a rock. Razor cut. If you were an animal, would you be a monkey or a polar bear? A polar bear. If you were a superhero, would you be Batman or Spider Man? Spider Man. If you were a song, would you be a house track or a hip hop track? House. How would people dance to you? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Identity and go ahead, have yourself a cupcake. Wow, you know I think I'm going to enjoy it. I'm sweet. I have a sweet tooth. I think I'll go for this one. <laughs> Utatu Mandela wake wati ukolelo lukunula umoya lususa uloyiko. Yo lonto lisi tobo esina manza. Nko siku chere mateko nga lo ngoko kwa isi mwanela impumelelo nguwa ambulu wake ekuputuleni abantu abamkongileyo. After the break, we spend time learning about the state of substance abuse in the country. Stay tuned for this informative story. See you in a moment. is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back. You're watching Identity with me, Viewer Gwala, right here on SAPC One Mzanzi for sure. Substance abuse is rife in South Africa. Over the years, newer, more potent and more debilitating types of addictive substances have been introduced. Our team recently spent a day with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, learning about new developments in treatment and support structures for addicts and their loved ones. Take a look at what they came back with. This is my identity. Substance abuse is an enormous social problem in South Africa, with drugs such as dick, nyaobem, heroin and alcohol incessantly devastating our society. SADC, in collaboration with other drug awareness organizations, institutions and concerned individuals, came together in Sands and Johannesburg to address the state of substance abuse in South Africa. We receive numerous calls from patients around the country dealing with issues of substance abuse um, in themselves as well as their loved ones. The most common thing being that people aren't able to easily access resources as well as information on substance abuse. Today, Sadag wanted to bring together the organizations to firstly encourage people to raise awareness and to create education about substance abuse as well as to work together. The speakers that will be speaking at the conference today are from many different walks of life. You've got psychiatrists um, who have worked at grassroots level and who understand the problems that face substance abusers. We also have case studies of people who have walked the path of substance abuse and who have experience to share with people on how to recover self-help tips as well as the plight of people who are experiencing substance abuse. Uh, we also have different people who have researched substance abuse in South Africa and who understand the stats and the trends in the country um, and this is what people need to understand in order to raise awareness as well as to prevent these problems from growing in our country. The pain that's associated and the feeling of hopelessness that is within our community you know here you have something destroying and, 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 and uh, wiping out families and you have abnormal things happening so there's a lot of turmoil there's a lot of chaos in our community there's a lot of there's a lot of deep-rooted pain and, and, and more especially hopelessness because I always say that with addiction, you know, um, when you someone is sick in your family, when your child is sick and, and they have a headache, you can just go to the doctor. But when you get that news or you're aware of the fact that your child might be a drug addict, you know, it's not so easy just to walk into a doctor's rooms. It's more like, what now? I've lived 
with addiction, um, not myself, but family members for a very long time. And myself and my brother and his girlfriend, we kind of thought, you know what, how about we take this help that we're giving people and, and the word we're trying to get out and let's put it into print. We tried it and we got a lot of sort of negativity around it because we called it addict exclamation mark because we want to break the stigma we want to break the shame surrounding addiction so we did we wanted to just get the message out there i manage the 24-hour substance abuse helpline which is the 0800 12 13 14 number that is specifically for substance abuse and it has been funded by the department of social development so we deal primarily with substance abuse related issues we take calls from the addict themselves or from the loved ones we help them find the best resources within their areas to help them be a social worker, a rehab facility, a support group. We focus on those kind of interventions on how they can get long-term assistance with their addiction. Last year we ran a campaign called Play for Life. We specifically focused on underage drinking. And with this program, it was really creating awareness for young people that you are a brand. You know, your image is everything that will, you know, help you in uh, becoming the person that you need to be and how you are seen, you know, by others and viewed by others and creates a reputation for you. Substance abuse doesn't only affect the user or addict, but it devastates the family and community. Attendees to the press conference explored all practical strategies, including the importance of spirituality in fighting the social ill. I speak to some addicts and they say to me, as I'm knowing the community, Auntie D, I went to church and I prayed and the pastor prayed for me and I've been clean for six months. We have to recognize that that has helped someone. We speak to someone that says, I've gone to an NA meeting and I have stayed clean. We have to recognize that NA works. Spirituality plays a very important role, the most important role, it plays the most important role. However, we placed the evidence-based and science-based treatment, medical treatment, on the foundation of spirituality. I mean, we say spiritual-based as a Muslim faith-based organization, we allow Christians, we, are, we allow people of other faiths to practice their faith within our, in, within our organization, within our centers. I think it's all about respecting the rights of the individual and his needs. In dealing with some music, it becomes effective when you understand what the person needs before you think you can give him something that you think he needs. Knowledge is power. Education is everything. I think environment is so important. Understanding is important and there are things that lead to full-blown addiction. And if we can bring about awareness it's from primary school age, introduce it in the schools, in the homes, into uh, corporate systems, you know, people need to be aware so that they know how to, how to react when things happen. You know what, all I want to say to that person that is experiencing peer pressure, all you want to do is just destroy people's lives and just steal and do the wrong things to get your next fix. It is just not in the plan of God for you to be a drug addict. This is my identity. Substance abuse not only affects those who are addicted, it also affects our society as a whole. We commend SADC and its partners for the work they're doing to put an end to this social ill that is plaguing Mzanzi. For more information, visit www.sadc.org. Unalona ibali elukuta zango kuyisa izi obisu. Kwa tumeli email ku identitytvshow at gmail.com. Singavu ya lukufa kuni. Masati keflo kubela. Kasibuya saungena ngu emkolwe nwe media review yetu. Na mshanje isi jongi app e pukula ubo mboluazi kwenye ne website yo ambu. Minga suku uke. This is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back to Identity with me, viewer Kuala. Thank you for staying tuned. If you only just joined us, you missed out on quite a bit. Entrepreneur and motivational speaker, Chere Madrika spoke on new beginnings and forgiving oneself. Today's regional story tackled the serious problem of substance abuse in South Africa. Now it's time to check out what's trending in cyberspace. Here is what's happening. Research shows that when you are happier in your career, you are more productive. If you're looking for tools to help you improve your skills, then today's app is for you. It's called Mind Tools. 
The Mind Tools app can be described as a library of self-help articles to help you boost your personal, management and business skills. The homepage displays a list of topics that are relevant to all aspects of life, from leadership and problem solving to communication skills and practical creativity. Select your preferred training topic to get started. Each topic gives you a library of articles that fall under that category. Select an article for an informative and easy read with practical advice, useful tips and key points to remember. Some of the articles offer a step-by-step -step guide to carrying out tasks that will help you improve specific areas. Like what you've just read? Then share it with your friends and family on social media or via email. Need to quickly find an article on a specific topic? Select the search option. Up your game by building your personal and career skills using the Mind Tools app. Time out is just as important as making sure you have a thriving career. If the travel bug has bitten you and you're planning to take time out from work, the website we are reviewing today will help you decide on a travel destination. It's www.theculturetrip.com. Theculturetrip.com is a one-stop platform that showcases the best in food, culture, art and travel from the countries of the world. The homepage offers a list of recent articles from across the globe. For a more specific search, select the continent of your choice and a drop-down menu reveals the various countries on that continent. Select a country and start browsing. For historical information about that country, scroll to the profile. Want to find out about the country's art, music or social scene? Select the relevant article and enjoy! If you'd like to submit information about your country or a country that you have recently visited, select the Submit an Article option. This leads you to a page that offers a writing guide as well as where to submit your article. The search option at the top of the web page makes looking for something specific faster and more convenient. You can also keep up to date with the latest info via the website's social media pages. Simply scroll to the bottom of the page. For a contemporary take on some of the world's best destinations, visit www.theculturetrip.com. Ipela kanja linkubo yetu ya namhlanje uti ngantoni ngayo sitalele ngukusipalela ku identity tv show at gmail.com kasifuma na ku social media sikona ku facebook twitter na ku instagram funa nje wena u identity tv show sikuma niwe tu the south african music scene is a melting pot of the beautiful sounds that we use to express ourselves sounds that set us apart from many nations today we're playing out with the award-winning contemporary gospel group we will worship here is their song called ngosi ya zulu from me, Viva Kuala, and the Identity Team, see you next week. Goodbye.